only mode. Good morning. Welcome um, to our webinar this morning, Home Inspection, What to Look For. Um, David Sorge is with me this morning with Inspect It First, and um, the topic we're going to be talking about this morning is the Infrared Advantage. My name is Sherry Davidson. I'm the president of Davidson Realty in St. Augustine, Florida. And I'd just like to tell you if you have any questions during the presentation this morning, um, please type them in on your screen and we will address them um, as soon as we can get to them. With that, I'll turn it over to David and let him introduce himself. Good morning and thanks, Sherry. Um, my name is David Sorge. I'm the pre president of uh, Inspector First of Northeast Florida, and I'm also the sitting director of Florida AFTI, which is the American Society of Home Inspectors. Um, we're really excited about this opportunity to speak to you folks about infrared. Uh, infrared is probably the uh, most exciting technology that's come around in a long time for a person looking to buy a home. The obvious question, what is thermography? And there are a host of scientific explanations floating around out there. But I think at the end of the day, the simplest way to describe it is that thermography is the language of temperature. Um, we go through the property with an infrared camera. Uh, that camera allows us to see things in, in a slightly different light. And uh, the photos on the screen are a good example of that. If you look at the closet on the left, that closet looks very normal. This was uh, in a condo. Before we left this room, we looked at the room with an infrared camera, and that dark spot back in the corner is actually a moisture signature. I mean, you can see it running along the baseboard from uh, outside the closet door all the way to the back inside of the closet. As it turned out, there was a plumbing fixture in there leaking inside the wall. We couldn't see it. So uh, again, this, it kind of gives us a different view on the world. An infrared inspection differs from a traditional home inspection in several ways. Um, traditionally, an inspection is about gathering as much information about the property as possible. A traditional inspection relies on what you can see, feel, and touch, um, what you can see with your flashlight. So the use of thermography helps fill in a missing piece of the puzzle. And here's a good example of that. Um, there's a lot of houses with propane tanks, and, and this example may be even considered a little bit silly. But just to give you an example here, we can't tell by looking at these tanks or really even by shaking them how much propane's in them. Uh, when conditions are right, looking at them with the thermal camera, we can actually tell that the left tank is empty and the, the right tank is about half full. Uh, we like to say that our clients are looking for an expert. We firmly believe in giving them one. Heating and cooling. Uh, we all know how important that is here in Florida, especially in the summertime. It is so brutally hot. Um, thermography allows us to test the heating and cooling system in a way that was simply unheard of just a few short years ago. Not only can we tell exactly what the temperatures are coming out of the ductwork, but we can document it for the client. This is extremely valuable, especially since we can inspect the home on the 1st of September and the clients may not move into that house for a month and a half. Uh, during that time frame, something can fail. And when something fails and somebody moves in and something's broke, usually the finger pointing starts. Well, the inspector missed this, the real estate agent did that. This gives us the ability to document the performance of a system on the day of the inspection, and it takes that finger pointing out of the equation. Um, speaking of air conditioning systems, the, the second part of that is the distribution system. Um, we largely cannot see duct work except what's visible in the attic. Um, if you look in the left photo, we're looking up the stairs in a townhouse and you could see a, a wall chase going from floor to ceiling. When we looked at the back side of that wall inside of a bathroom, we saw the thermal signature on the right and that was an indication of a duct leak inside of that wall cavity. Um, duct leaks has how you have cold air blowing into an unfinished space, an un unfinished space that is often very hot and sticky, and that can usually end up being a, a mold problem. 
not to mention the amount of money that you're pumping into your attic with those conditions. So again, it allows us to see things that we just can't see with the naked eye. Are all inspectors using this technology? Uh, unfortunately, the answer to that is no. Um, many inspectors believe that thermography goes a little too far. Um, some inspectors are simply not tech savvy. And it, truth be told, I don't want to pick on inspectors here, but a lot of businesses that have been around for a very long time are slow to grasp technology. Um, we did not want to be one of those companies when we came into this line of work. And uh, I think our military background had, uh, had exposed us to this a long time ago. And that's where thermography came from. Uh, our armed forces have been using it for decades. So has the space program. So we latched onto it uh, right away. I'm retired Navy. Um, the equipment is very expensive. Uh, the camera that I use costs $8,000. That's a lot of money for a small inspection firm to spend. So a lot of guys don't want to get involved. Even some inspectors that have purchased these cameras, uh, many of them didn't know what they were getting into. Uh, they didn't understand how to exploit the camera's value. And a lot of times their camera spends its life sitting inside of the box collecting dust. They don't even use them. Um, another big issue is, is if you're not properly trained in how to use these things and make a mistake, word travels fast. So uh, that, that can frighten a lot of inspectors away from this device too. Um, Moisture, plumbing leaks, roof leaks, all of those moisture issues are probably the biggest advantage to this technology. These conditions can list for months without ever leaving any kind of visible evidence. Thermography allows us to see those things while they're still in their early stages. It, the condition has not yet had a chance to do any damage. Not only that, we can go beyond pointing out the condition and actually diagnose it and see exactly where it's coming from. Cool heating equipment, and this is one where it's funny because almost uh, almost every month I find a new use for thermography. Um, when I first got into thermography, I realized this application right away, but electric cool heat pumps, for years we did not have the ability to test them to see if they were actually working other than listening to them and see if they make noise <laughs> or putting your hand in the water. Uh, with a thermal camera, we could actually look at the temperatures of the different coils on the unit, and we can measure the temperature at the inlet and outlet. Um, that was previously not possible. In fact, if you look at the inlet and outlet pipes at the bottom of the screen, that temperature difference is only about 2, 3 degrees. Very difficult to tell by just putting your hand on it. This is a typical write-up of what you would see during one of our inspections if we did find a defect. Um, this was actually a condition that was not visible with the naked eye. Uh, we had a, a balcony above the front door that was leaking. When we looked at it with the thermal camera, we saw the telltale moisture signature, which is a dark spot. In fact, for those of you listening, when something is wet, that water wants to equalize with the surrounding environment. It wants to evaporate. As water evaporates, it cools off whatever it's touching. And that dark blue is actually what is typically associated with a moisture signature. In fact, every thermal image we look at, as a general rule, something that's yellow or orange is warm, and something that's uh, blue or purple is cold. So uh, moisture will create a dark blue signature because that moisture is evaporating. But uh, again, this is a typical write-up. Uh, you'll notice uh, the second sentence down, moisture meter readings were compared to known dry locations and were found to be in excess of 50%. Since a thermal camera can lie to you, you have to verify that what you're looking at is real. And we do that by following up with a direct reading moisture meter. One of the reasons we have to do that is because a dark spot does not mean something is wet. It just means that something is cold. So in other words, there could be an air conditioning duct simply blowing cold air on that, that part of the house. So we do have to verify and make sure it is, in fact, wet. Are there any differences in the equipment available to inspectors? Absolutely. Um, as with all technology, it kind of starts out small and snowballs. Uh, manufacturers are building more and more of these cameras. 
uh, the more they build and the more they sell, the cheaper it's getting. Um, that's a good thing for everybody involved. One of the problems with that is, is that some of the cheaper cameras, while fine for doing energy audits, can be inadequate when it comes to being used in low delta T environments. And, and that sounds really technical, but uh, delta T is very simple. Uh, in uh, infrared speak, it's simply the difference that exists or that we can create between the interior temperature of the house and what exists on the outside. If we can manipulate the temperature of the house to a great degree, the camera can see better. That would be considered a high delta T environment. Unfortunately, houses are typically low delta T environments because regardless of how you manipulate that temperature, that temperature difference only is a benefit to you at exterior walls. There are interior walls that are unaffected by that temperature manipulation. So 